Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Catherine Basu. And sometimes as the week comes to an end, we can feel a little overwhelmed with everything we still have to accomplish. If you're feeling that way today, it is a Thursday, at least when I'm scheduling this episode to go live, I have a few guests that can help you with that. One was last Friday's guest, Susie Carroll, who talked specifically about overcoming overwhelm. Susie does talk a lot about your personal values in her own work, but I didn't have Susie focus on that because I knew I was going to have today's guest, Danielle Reed, on for two episodes worth of talking about finding your core values. So I'm excited to share this conversation with Danielle that I've broken up into two episodes. Today, I will introduce you to Danielle and she'll share her personal journey and a little bit about finding her core values and why that's important. And then tomorrow, we'll talk more about tips and strategies she has to help you find your core values. Here's a little bit more about Danielle before I share our conversation. Danielle Reed is an authenticity coach, a professional speaker, author, and workshop facilitator. Danielle was a teacher and learning support facilitator for 17 years. The most important parts of her teaching career were building relationships and providing everyone around her with optimism and laughter. She took a leave from teaching to complete her co-active life coaching courses, The Daring Way and Rising Strong Trainings. And it is there that she discovered her greatest passion. Today, Danielle works with individuals and groups to empower and inspire them to move toward living an authentic, wholehearted life so that they can give others around them permission to do the same. Danielle, welcome to the podcast. It's so great to have you as my guest today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I had the honor of meeting you some three years ago now at Chantel Adams Shine Live event and was really inspired by your story and journey. Wonder if you could start us off by sharing with the listeners your story and how you got to be doing what you're doing now and have that focus on values. Sure. Yeah. Um, I always kind of go back like way back and I laugh at myself that I go back to childhood when I explain this, but really I think that that's the best way um, to really get the full picture of what life was like and how it shifted for me. So growing up as a kid, I was, I was really a perfectionist. One of those um, people that detached all my accomplishments to like, what will everybody else think? And mm. uh, a worth type thing. And, you know, I played a lot of sports. I hung out with the cool kids. I did well in school. And I remember as a young kid feeling exhausted. Like, is this how life is supposed to be? But then looking around and thinking, I think everybody else must feel very similar that this is normal. And so, you know, I just carried on and there were parts that I loved, but there was a lot of times when I just felt like it was like climbing a mountain. I couldn't ever seem to get on top of things. And when your measurement stick is the best, <laughs> mm. there's always going to be someone better. And mm-hmm. so um, it just left me a lot of times kind of feeling a bit like a failure. And I went into adulthood, um, had two kids. I got my teaching degree. I was teaching and in administration in schools and two little boys and my husband and I would like to say that things changed but actually they probably really amped up a little bit I think I always call my talk about my life as an adult kind of like a game of whack-a-mole sure (laughs) you know the bear when it's like you hit a mole and another one's popping up and you're trying to whack that one and another one's popping up and it's just like you never can seem to get them all and that's really what life felt like it was like I'd have something in front of me. And before I'd even sit with it and celebrate, um, think about, does this fill me up? I'd be on to the next mall. So I always kind of make reference in my life to my teaching. You know, I started out as a teacher. I loved it. And then very quickly, someone said to me, oh my gosh, you're great at that. You should think about a learning support facilitator. So it was like the next mall popped up. So I was being that. And what about administration? And then I was being that. And then I hated administration. Like I was not, it's not aligned with who I am whatsoever as a person. Sure. But nowhere along that journey, did I ever stop to look back and say, 
Where was I happiest? Where did I most feel like myself? Where was I most aligned? Um, I also share the story about it was like in my running world. So I played sports all my life. But when I was in my early 20s, I decided to take up running. My dad was a runner, ran marathon. So I think mm-hmm. he was my inspiration. And I started, um, but, I, but I started like, I'm just going to run a 5K. I'm going to talk the kids at school into running a 5K. And I was so pumped and got all these kids together. We ran this race. But I remember being like the finish line was in sight. And I could see it. And the first thing that popped into my head was, I should think about running a 10K. So there was never a moment where I stopped and said, did I love this 5K? Am I proud of myself for this 5K? Does it feel good? But I was like, oh, I got to do a 10K. And then I was running, training for a 10K. It was like, you should run a half marathon and then a marathon and then a leg of the death race and then two legs of the death race. And then maybe you should run the whole death race. And here I was on my computer registering myself to run the entire death race, like 125 kilometers up and down mountains. When I stopped for one moment and thought, I don't even actually really like running. Oh. And, you know, when I look back now, at the time I didn't have this knowledge within me to kind of stop and go, where was I happiest? Where felt most aligned? Where felt best for me? And the truth is probably around 10K. Like, mm-hmm. I love that distance. And somehow, though, it was like the next mole just kept popping up and taunting me that, like, you'll matter more. You'll you know, look how important you'll be if you do this next best thing and this next best thing. And I just kept following that instead of following my heart. And Mm. so not long after that, here I was trying to be like a vice principal for a little while. I had my two young kids at the school that I was at. I was sitting in my office on my floor at the end of the day. I was trying to train for the death race. And Uh, My husband just said to me one day, I don't think this is the life that I signed up for. Mm. Like, I'm not happy. I feel like everything else is a priority for you. And it absolutely was true. But it was the most heart-wrenching moment of my life because you you know, you think that all these things that you're doing are so important. Hi friends, it's Catherine, and hopefully you're joining us for an out and back walk. If you are and you only have 15 minutes, that was your halfway point reminder. You want to turn around now. All right, back to Danielle. And in that moment when he said that to me, what I realized was actually the things that are most important to me are my family, my marriage, my kids, and this legacy that I wanted to leave, this example that I wanted to be to my kids. And so I had to take a really hard look at the why behind why was I doing all these things? What, mm-hmm. How did I convince myself that they all mattered? And then the more important step was like, how do I get back to this person that I know is within me, but has been lost for so, so long? Right. Um, so it started with the journey about toward my values. I kind of took a leave from, I just left everything almost behind, like I took a leave from work. I quit mm-hmm. running. I quit playing soccer. I like just left everything because I thought I can't be partially in those things and connect back to what are the things that really light me up. So I just kind of went back to clean slate and Mm -hmm. I went and did my life coaching course um, during that time. And one of the first things they said was, uh, what are your top values, your top 10 values? And I just drew a blank, like, I don't know what matters to me. I'm not really sure um, what the things are that really light me up anymore. And so I remember being sent up to my hotel room that night with this task, like, you know, you're going to go up, find your 10 values, you'll come back tomorrow morning and share them. And so I sat there with a piece of paper and instantly these words started like flying onto the paper, but my ego was writing every single one of those words on paper. It was like the (laughs) whack-a-mole They're going accomplishment and achievement and you know all these things so that yep. and then I looked at this list of 10 and I thought why do I feel like throwing up right now like mm. this is not this is not me so the journey was about three months like for me to sit back and notice every moment in the day what put a smile on my face what did I love where did I feel totally aligned and most importantly where was my heart like going oh my gosh this is who you are like welcome back and um, it, not long after that, I went to Texas to do the, some training with, under Brene Brown, um, mm-hmm. to learn the daring way 
curriculum. And the first thing she said when she got on stage to us was, there is one thing you better carry with you every moment of every day in your back pocket. You better have a very clear sense of what your values are. And you know, when you just keep hearing the same message over and over, I knew, (laughs) I knew I can't ignore this. There is a reason that everywhere I look right now, values are popping up. And so I did, I got really intentional about knowing what my top values are. And I just started to wake up every morning, sit on the edge of my bed and recite my words um, to myself and think authenticity, balance, connection, gratitude, humor, health, learning, organization, optimism, understanding and legacy. And I would just sit in that space of those words and think if I could live even half of those with like total truth today, how great life would feel. And the more I was aware of what they were, the more I stepped into them and the more I thought, oh my gosh, is this really, like, can life really, truly feel this awesome? And Mm -hmm. I kept waiting for the moment when something changed, but it didn't. It just kept feeling like better and better and more aligned. And even in the moments in the middle of the day when something would all of a sudden feel off, you know, when you're just humming along and having a great day and then your mood shifts or you get, and I'm like, oh, I think this is an indicator. So I'd go right away through those words, like authenticity, balance, connection. And I think, and I'd be like, oh, there it is. But you know, the minute we feel that pit in the stomach or that sort of shift off of the truth, um, shift off our path. I know that that's because we are, for whatever reason, not living one of those values in that moment. And I love that because it means we don't have to jump into this bad, bad day mentality. We actually get to have bad moments that turn back into good days and so that's kind of been my journey the last like eight or eight or 10 years. I've just been focused on sharing the message of values. Um, it's had a huge impact on my marriage, on my family, on my kids. They were like six and nine when I first started this journey with them and they're 14 and 17 today. And I can't tell you um, how it has impacted who they are because of knowing what's important to them. Sure. But I know I shared with you, it's, it starts with us. Like I have to do my own work in order to bring this work to my family in order to see the, that impact. So that's kind of been the journey. And that's mostly what I do for work is just tour around, um, share the message of values, uh, work with students and businesses and pretty much anyone who, who asked me to come in and just say like, this is not rocket science connecting to your values and really living in alignment is without a doubt for me the path toward just that contentment in our own lives I absolutely love your story and journey Danielle and I'm sure there will be listeners who are hearing that message and maybe thinking for the first time that it could be the fact that they're not living authentically and with their values that is making things challenging for them and I'm excited to hear some of their insights after they start working on their values one thing I really love that you shared is this idea that our values are already within us. So it should not take us a long, drawn out journey to be able to find them. We just have to sit with who we are and we can make progress going forward that way. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, all you have to do is stop and pay attention in the moments when you feel that, you know, when you like want to high five yourself, you're just like, this moment is amazing. Then I'm like, be curious, like what values are present in this moment? Is it connection? Is it because you're having a balanced day? Is it because you're in your art room making some kind of craft and you creativity matters? Like those are signs. And it's just like the flip of that is in the moments of frustration Um, or anger when something's bothering you, that is the best indicator um, that's pointing you toward a value. So you go, oh, this drives me crazy. I'm not liking this right now. What's the flip of that? The flip is a value that matters to me. And in this moment, whether it's ourselves, you know, sweeping it under the carpet or someone else stomping on it, it's just such great awareness to go, I didn't realize that that mattered so much to me. And I think for me, the big shift was finding those words and like, putting them on paper and staring at them and realizing, you know, I was one of those people who all said, I'll never have a balanced life. I can't. My kids are young. I'm working full time. I'm too busy. There will never be balance. But then what I was saying is I'm always going to give myself a gap between who I want to be and who I'm being. And when there is a gap there, that's when things like anxiety and depression and lack of fulfillment and feeling stuck happen. And so I needed to say, 
if I love Saturday mornings when we have nothing planned, and that is one of my greatest days of the week, then balance does matter to me. And I better give that a voice and I better put that on my list. And I better start thinking about what should I say yes to? What should I say no to? um, So that I get that sense of balance back so I can close that gap and be more aligned with the kind of person I want to be. No, I absolutely love that. I guess, would you say then, I think I know the answer to this, but when you, when you finally got your, your 10 values listed, I mean, do you, have you found that they've changed at all over the past few years or how does that come into play? That's a great question. Cause everybody always asks me that. Will they change? Will they change? And, you know, I think depending on our situations, depending on our experience and circumstance, um, that there might be some shift, but mm-hmm. I, mine have not budged from that day, like eight years ago when I found them, I, they just, when that list was created, it was like my heart leapt out of me and grabbed those words off the page. It was like, yeah. oh gosh, here you are. Like, here you are. And I've even watched, you know, my kids, like I said, they're, that's eight years ago and they were young and now they're older. And so we quite often will just revisit their words because we have a wall painted in our kitchen with everybody's values words on them. And Um, We'll revisit them and there is very little shift. I think there's the core of who they truly are. And then there's little things with experience. Like one example is my younger son. Um, About a year ago, he said to me, mom, I think I'm missing a word on my board and I think it's contribution. Mm -hmm. And he said, so my father-in-law passed away about two, not quite two years ago now. And he was a real community person who really gave back and helped out. And when he passed away, it was like my old, my younger son kind of stepped into that role, like felt his legacy, felt he could be connected to him by kind of being like him in that sense. Yeah. Realized how much he loved contributing and, um, but he didn't, hadn't had that experience prior to that. You know, he was young, he didn't really have a lot of places he could contribute. And so I think that there will be moments when we'll say, Oh, this is something new for me. I'm doing more of this. And I realized this is one of those words. And then, yeah, but uh, I really feel um, and from what I've seen in the last eight years is that for the most part, people have a real core set of values that I believe probably have been in them from the time they were born. And with mine, when I look back, you know, to when I was, you know, maybe in my teens or in my twenties or, and think, oh, the a time that was miserable, like, of course it was miserable because I didn't live this, 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 you know, and right. so I do think that they have um, been there for a lot longer than we might acknowledge. Right. Hi friends, it's Catherine, and I'm just going to end our conversation for today. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to be notified when the second half of our conversation goes live tomorrow. In that half of our conversation, Danielle will be talking about why finding your values matters in terms of your health and how you can find your core values. Danielle will share three tips and strategies for doing that and some of the great resources she has, like her awesome What Matters cards. As Danielle mentioned, she has a new book coming out, so be sure to hit the show notes to find out more information about that by checking out her website. And going to the show notes will also get you your free copy of my book, which will stop being available for free download today. I hope you get to get a copy, stay inspired, and to talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to The Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time.